like synthetic Stallone wig. It's on sell nobody, okay? <laughs> Hello world, I'm Hadia, your fairy glow mother. I have magical powers and bring good fortune to your skin. I'm a licensed esthetician based in Oakland, California, and I'm starting a new series here on my YouTube and my OnlyFans channel because yes, okay, it's 2020, nothing's stopping you back. I got an OnlyFans too, oh boy, called the ABCs of skincare where I break down a mix of ingredients, techniques, tools, products, anything that you may find useful in your um, skincare routines. So YouTubers, if you want to continue receiving quality, completely free of charge content like this, subscribe now. Click the notification bell, all of that. Thank you so much. Um, let's get into it, okay? So I couldn't think of a better way to start this series off than with one of my favorite ingredients, which is our beauty. So the TLDR or TLDW or whatever, because you're watching this, is that our butin is a naturally derived ingredient that mimics the powerful synthetic ingredient of hydroquinone, but without any of the downsides. I'm going to explain the relationship between the two in just a bit. Arbutin is most commonly extracted from the bearberry plant, but it can also be found in cranberries, blueberries, wheat, and pears. In the world of skincare, arbutin is a tyrosinase inhibitor. This means that this ingredient pauses enzyme activity that signals our bodies to produce melanin. I'm going to repeat that because it's kind of important. Alpha arbutin or arbutin is a tyrosinase inhibitor. This means that this ingredient pauses, pauses the enzyme activity that signals our bodies to produce melanin. Now, with arbutin being a tyrosinase inhibitor, it is primarily sought after and used in skincare routines to correct hyperpigmentation, discoloration, dark marks, whatever you call it. I mentioned in the beginning that this ingredient mimics hydroquinone, so let's dive into that a bit. Both arbutin and hydroquinone have the same effects on discoloration in the skin, but the primary difference is, is that arbutin works slowly and it does not cause any irritation. It inhibits melanocyte activity while hydroquinone can kill melanocytes altogether. And most importantly, it does not bleach the skin. Arbutin is super, super safe when it comes to treating any type of hyperpigmentation. Hydroquinone, as you may know, is banned in the European Union. And as of March, 2020, it's kind of the same for us here in the United States. It is now only available here in the US with the prescription. And this change was kind of slipped in with the CARES Act as a part of the overhaul of the FDA. Brands have until the end of September to remove items containing hydroquinone and other category two drugs or ingredients from their shelves unless they were given an, an extension by the FDA. So it's very likely that you're about to be seeing a lot more products touting the benefits of Arbutin in the coming months. Now, Arbutin is kind of a rare ingredient in that it can temporarily prevent hyperpigmentation from happening, but it also treats existing hyperpigmentation in the skin. Research shows that Arbutin is effective at a maximum concentration of 2%, which is why you don't see many brands touting high percentages, though some brands do list Arbutin at about a 5% concentration. In this modern age where brands mistakenly think consumers are ingredient savvy, it's been singled out and highlighted as a standalone ingredient, commonly paired with just like hyaluronic acid or uh, sometimes even just like Arbutin vitamin C. But that's not exactly the most beneficial use of the ingredient. So Arbutin plays well with others. You're commonly gonna find it chilling in products alongside other tyrosinase inhibitors such as kojic acid, licorice root, and antioxidants like vitamin C, but it's also common to find it paired with other alpha hydroxy acid exfoliants. One of the questions asked most frequently about Arbutin is whether there's a difference between alpha Arbutin and just plain Arbutin or beta Arbutin. 
To be quite honest, the answer seems to be complicated. So I'm just going to tell you what I found based on research that is currently available. And, you know, skincare is science. Science is always changing. So I'm giving you this information today, but it very well may change in the near future. So it's always best to keep up to date with various trade publications when you're looking for the latest, latest, greatest information on certain skin certain skincare ingredients. It's true that the overwhelming majority of research on the ingredient focuses on alpha arbutin, but so much of that research happened like pre-1996 and newer research into tyrosinase inhibitors and hyperpigmentation in general cite the earlier works, but they don't really push any new findings as far as alpha arbutin being better than arbutin um, or anything like that is concerned. On the other hand, there has been some newer research into beta arbutin specifically that kind of suggests it may actually be better than alpha, arbu alpha arbutin. However, it's just been one study, so I definitely don't want to tell you that that's gospel. The only thing I can say for sure is that alpha arbutin is slightly more stable than beta arbutin, which I think is kind of more important for skincare formulators than it is for the consumers. So you want your ingredients to be the most stable so that they have a longer lasting effect and that they have the maximum shelf life when you're selling a product. But I don't think it's going to make much of a difference if I'm making a product and I'm already selling you this one product for you to look at it and say, oh no, this just has arbutin or Ugh, this is just beta arbutin. Like I, I think in formulating, or at least it is my hope, that a lot of other companies and formulators are going to give you a solid, decent product no matter what. Um, I don't think it means that your product is gonna break down faster or anything like that. So I say all that to say for you, the consumer, I don't think it matters that much. And even in the research, you know, it's like a marginal, it's, mar it's, a, it's marginally better, but it's not like, wow, definitely never use Arbutin, only use Alpha Arbutin, so that's that. Okay, real quick, I wanna clear some things up surrounding Arbutin. A lot of brands or their marketing departments or whatever position Arbutin as a skin brightener and I feel like that could be just a little misleading. Arbutin does not instantly brighten the skin upon application. So if you're expecting to get a quick glow like you might get when you use niacinamide or vitamin C, that is not going to happen. This is an ingredient that I feel helps with evening out skin tone, but not one that brightens. And also an even skin tone does not always have to equal brighter or lighter skin. I just wanna put that out there. If you remember, I said that Arbutin pauses enzyme activity and temporarily prevents hyperpigmentation. This means that if you stop using it, the pigmentation will likely come back. And it also means that you can't just slap Arbutin on top of inflamed breakouts in hopes that the action will prevent a scar from appearing. Remember, you always have to treat the inflammation first, hyperpigmentation and scarring second. This is also why I think utilizing products that are just Arbutin with no other tyrosinase inhibitors, antioxidants, or exfoliants is a bit of a waste of use and money. So what are the best products to use with Arbutin or Alpha Arbutin? And what treatments can you get from an esthetician that best utilizes this ingredient? Well, subscribe to my OnlyFans. <laughs> So continue watching this full video and find out which products you should trash and which ones you should totally buy with all of your Zolas. Okay. Um, the link to my OnlyFans, of course, is gonna be in my description box down below and uploads there happen every Friday. If you follow me on YouTube and subscribe here, if you see a video here, there is more, than, more likely than not, a full video is gonna be on my OnlyFans, so. That's kind of how that works. If you just want the information, surprise, you have it. <laughs> All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell to be the first to see new videos. Leave your suggestions for future topics in the comments and thank you so much for watching. I'm Hadia, your fairy glow mother. 
and I'm out. Oh, wait, no. Before I go, if you're interested in a skincare consultation, a virtual consultation, because I'm in the Bay and I'm still closed, you can do so. And I will put the link down below as well. Thanks for watching. Bye.